Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the electric eel wheel cone winder. I've probably done more prototypes for this device than any of my others in the past. There's just been, I mean, probably 10 prototypes since last time I did an update video on this. There's just been so many different things I wanted to try with this. And I'm finally getting to the point where I'm pretty happy with it. It's still not quite to the point where I want to share it with beta testers yet. I usually want to get it completely happy with it myself before I do that and start incorporating their suggestions. But uh, I want to go over all of the changes since there have been a lot since last time. So here it is. One of the first things you'll see that is different is the guide for the yarn before it goes on to the drum is no longer separate. That's based on feedback from last time. While some people like the separate yarn guide, the majority definitely wanted it, it incorporated just so that it would be easier to move around uh, and you'd only have to uh, clamp down the main base and then this is just going to be attached. So that'll, that will make moving it around a little bit simpler. So I haven't finalized this design yet, but uh, I've tested this one and this seems to work pretty good already. And this is my very first attempt at a wire yarn guide in the front. So uh, it'll get a little bit better, but uh, that's not as difficult as I was afraid it might be. Uh, another big change is how the cone attaches. So you can see right here that it's uh, on this articulating arm and this arm is actually spring-loaded so there's actually a spring on this hinge in the back and that means that it's constantly pressing down against the drum which makes it work really well so I'm, I'm really happy with how that works uh, and because it's spring-loaded it doesn't stay up but I created this little key like device here so you can stick that and then that just sort of holds it up and you can work with the uh, drum and get everything lined up. And then when you're done, you just take it and you can put it back down. So I really, that took many different versions of this arm redesign. And I'm really happy with how that works. That's much better than sort of the sliding mechanism. I tried lots of different things. I tried a single arm configuration, but the plastic was too flimsy for that. So with this design, it really is quite nice. And I'll show you how the bobbin actually works now. So this is the bobbin holder. And this is, I, I really went with this direction because I wanted to accommodate more bobbins. I tried a few different cones and one of them worked. A few of them didn't with this cone holder, but none of them really worked very well. But the nice thing about this is it's a pretty easy part to 3D print. So I would not be surprised if, in fact, I will encourage people to uh, make 3D printable files to adopt this to different sized cones and things. The main limitation is going to be that you're going to want a cone that w with this kind of a drum system, the yarn goes back and forth this far. So you're going to need a cone that takes up that much room. Now the good thing is cone lengths are pretty standardized. So this is a standard length cone. So it should be possible to fit most full length cones onto this device. I haven't tried too many of them, but I, and, and I don't know that this is my top priority, but I do feel happy that, you know, by simply 3D printing a new one of these, you should be able to uh, accommodate many different kinds of cones. Yeah, you just slot it in there and put it back into the device like that. And that's all there is to it. Uh, there have been a lot of other cosmetic changes to the case and kind of trying to get it to be sort of a minimum size and um, starting to optimize for price. Uh, I've got a new clamping system, but I don't have the new clamps designed yet. Uh, it, hopefully I'll be using a clamp very similar to a new one I'm designing for the yarn counter, but I don't have those in, so I can't really show those off yet. Underneath, let's see, we've got a circuit board that's actually designed for the cone winder, which is, before I was just using an electric eel wheel, six circuit board. This, co this PCB has a bunch of different features that are specific to this design. The case now holds the uh, speed control and an on-off switch. It also has 
a little port here that you can plug into the yarn counter and then the yarn counter will be able to turn off this cone winder. So kind of integrating those. Both of them will be sold separately and you'll be able to use one without the other, but if you want, you can combine them and they'll work together. So I think that's most of the changes I wanted to show you. Now I'm going to show you how it winds yarn onto a cone. So I'm going to see if I can fit four balls of yarn onto the cone right now. Uh, this will be one pound of yarn. I'm not sure if it'll actually fit on the cone. I've never put this much on the cone. So you guys will find out along with me whether we can fit one pound of yarn onto these cones. Okay, now is a good time to mention a few of the things that aren't quite ideal in this version, but I'll get fixed. The first one is this key that holds the bobbin up. It actually still can fall out. So the final version will have it leaning back a little bit more. And I actually already have the changes for that in the CAD files, but I don't have a version printed with those changes. So I'm just gonna set this down for now, but in the final version, it'll just lean back. Uh, another thing that I'm not completely happy with is sort of how I get the yarn on past this uh, drum. So right now I just sort of sneak it in through the side and I think I can come up with something better for the final version. Uh, maybe some kind of a hook or something that'll hold it. I mean this isn't bad but I, I think I can probably do a little bit better on the final version. And then at this point, we just slot it in like that, and we should be good to go. So we just turn up the speed. I'm gonna start it off really slow, so you can sort of see what's happening. Oops, yeah, okay, so it's just a second. Let's get a better angle and also this hook is this this piece is moving back and forth. I haven't secured it yet, so I'm gonna have to secure it better and get you a better look at what's happening. So this is already the second version of this metal wire thing. At the beginning of this video I said it was the first version, and well this is the second version. And it's it's wobbling back and forth, so I'm just gonna tape it down now. I think that will hold it in place well enough to shoot this video. I already have ideas on how to improve that, but uh, just to get this video shot and sort of show you how things are working, I'm just gonna do that. And now we can go back to going very slowly. A little faster than that, maybe. So you'll notice that the yarn is bouncing around. That's mostly to do with this thing still moving a little bit and the tension being pretty terrible right now on this ball. So I'm going to speed it up and just see if we can fit all of the balls of yarn on here. Okay, now we're just gonna attach the second ball. So 
So that's two yarn balls worth, uh, about eight ounces, and there's still some room left, so we're gonna keep going. So that's three bobbins, about 12 ounces, and we still have a little space on there, so we'll see if this fourth one will fit. And there you have it. One pound of yarn on a bobbin. Let's take a look at the bobbin. Ooh. So this is what one pound of yarn on a cone looks like. I do think that I can probably uh, fit a little more, but I think one pound is a good number to shoot for. I, I was shooting for either eight ounces or one pound, but it definitely looks like it'll hold a, a pound. Uh, with room to spare. The cone here is a, a little tighter than I would like. I think that's because of my janky tensioning system for the ball of yarn. But uh, yeah, this is one pound of yarn on a cone. And yeah, the ends aren't perfect. The winding wasn't perfect. Uh, I, th I attribute a lot of that to this uh, janky uh, movie, movable yarn guide. I think... Uh, that's going to be one of my big improvements on the next version that I work on before I send it out to beta testers. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And as you would expect, the yarn comes off the cone perfectly. So uh, that was one of the main goals, make it easy to knit off of this machine knit or hand knit. Either way, um, these are probably cones are one of the easiest ways to hold your yarn for the actual process of smoothly taking it off the cone it much works much better than a ball that's i mean that's a big reason why i was having problems with the tensioning getting it onto the cone it just sort of moves around and things so uh that's something i'll, I'll work on and uh the next version I'll, I'll definitely have a better tensioning system but um quite happy with this version overall thanks for watching